the wise guys tcg10 coupon code use it what's going on guys it's greg farley from the wise guys aka pegasus and we got a special video for you today i told you we have road to nats this time it's the salomon great edition and we're here today to talk about the biggest strengths and the biggest weaknesses you probably already know them but we have to recap them and really go over the numbers because numbers matter and it's nats time there's no bigger tournament than this so let's jump into it shall we now when we talk about every card in the deck and what the most powerful cards in the deck before we even get to the Salomon Great cards I think we have to realize how powerful Abyss Dweller is against this deck but when we talk about Abyss Dweller we have to take into account Salomon Great Falco being under Abyss Dweller that's the most powerful thing about this deck if you use YGOScope.com it basically is a, a coverage or a complete understanding of all the rank matches that take place on the rank ladder of dueling book which is it can be irrelevant at times if you're looking at low tier duels but if you look at the at the top 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 tier and i have a lot of friends that are up at that top tier it's just salmon great everywhere if you look at the numbers basically at the at the top and even at the big tournaments that just happened already from the national tournaments salmon great is the most used deck now in real life the clear, the clear, clear, clear point is that it's the most used deck because up. it's a structure Cost deck. Cost you $30, it's spend some money on some Salomon, Salomon great stuff like Signet Mining, and you're good. You're good to roll. But online, it's used almost three times as much as the next deck. So let's use an example. Salomon great is used 9,260 matches since April 26th, I believe, 29th, and then from from that point, I think it drops to like 3,611 from Sky Striker. So, Salomon Great is far and away what people are preparing for. And that has been shown clearly on paper when you see the top cut of these tournaments and even the entry level uh, number of these tournaments. Now, getting back into the specifics of the, the specific cars that take place in matches. Again, Dweller with a Falco under it is so very, very powerful. Now, in the mirror match, clearly because... Falco being able to come back and reoccur as it's under a dweller, you're cutting off your opponent from using the graveyard and then bringing something back from the graveyard. Well, yeah, clearly the winning percentage of that is going to be really high. And that's at 69%, which is very, very, very powerful. But getting into the specifics of the deck, the strengths are Salmon Great Heat Leo, because basically the same way as Altergeist Hextia, when it drops, the game is pretty much on the ropes or it's over. And it's almost always a knockout punch, which is 67% of the time the game ends when Salomon Great Leo hits the field. That's a pretty high percentage going as far as cards. So let's use a reference point as an example. Boris War Dragon being 71%. It lets you know how powerful Salomon Great Heat Leo is. Moving on, we got cards. We got cards, so many cards to mention. But I think we have to talk about Mirage Stalio. And how powerful it is but it's not mirage stallio itself it's the cards that come along with it if you have a gazelle or a foxy which again matters it basically is saying i have recursion under me and i'm going to come back so the biggest strength from all three of these points is that the graveyard is the deck's strength its graveyard is its hand and when you have decks like that i.e infernoids i.e necros when it comes back it's going to be pretty, pretty darn good. I think we would be so remiss in not mentioning that the deck can go off off of one card historically in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And really, when you think about this, you're thinking about stuff like Bujin, you're thinking about stuff like Zodiac. When you can go off off of one card, somewhat, if you have the Gazelle, basically, and Lady Debug, you have to you have to understand how powerful one card being able to go off is because it allows you to deck build around that, and everybody deck builds around that. And what can happen with that? You got Phantasmaze, you got artifact stuff, you got other hand traps such as Ash, such as Valor, so on and so forth. It's it's really what it is. It's really what it is. It's just going off off of one card, and you have to understand that in order to understand how to beat the deck and let's get into the weaknesses I think whether you're gonna play this deck or you're not gonna play this deck you have to understand this deck ceiling isn't that high 
Yes, it has some combos that you have to remember, but once you got them, you got them. It's not a spiral deck. It's not a, a thunder deck. It's not long combos that you can adjust or add another wrinkle into the combo. It's going to do what it's going to do, and it's going to do it over and over and over and over again. And then it just becomes how well do you play the deck and how much do you overextend or not overextend. I think that the tip of the deck and the most important part about the deck and understanding how to interact with it when you play against it at nationals is understanding whether somebody overcommits or not. Now, if you're playing it, don't overcommit so much because if you overcommit and you get cracked, the deck can come back, but it's not good when you're walking into stuff like Sky Striker. Sky Striker will outgrind you, so you have to be able to either time it right and go after them but not give them too much or be able to stop them with their hand traps. Now, when you put that aside and you move on, oftentimes it's been said, and it's a very famous quote, that your biggest strength can be your biggest weakness. So let's say someone is a very, very powerful thinker. Sometimes they can get in their head too much. If we look at Salomon Great, the graveyard is the most powerful thing about this deck. At least that's in my opinion. Yes, it can go off of a one card, but that's not always that phenomenal. You know, you open a spinny by itself. Okay, so what? But when it turns into something else, you have to understand, man, if my graveyard gets cut off, that's kind of ugly for me. And also, if you use it as your hand, that's kind of ugly. So let's use an example. When we had Infernoids and somebody activated Necro Valley, pick your cards up because it's over. If you don't have the out, if you don't have a truly in your hand, it's pretty much over. It's the same way with Salomon Great. The thing is, most of the time, you're going to have the answer as long as you don't get baited on your rage or your roar you're going to have the answer for something like let's say a necro valley just using an example mystic mind i guess you can put that along the same lines but it's pretty much the same thing a salomon gray player with the correct text and the correct understanding of when to push and when not to push they're always going to be a problem and some people just know how to play the deck and some people do not and this is one of the decks where it really shows whether you really know how to play it or not, and the good players usually do pretty well with it. This is just part one. We have so many more to come. As well as Tech Thursday, make sure you check out that video. This is Greg Farley from The Wise Guys, a.k.a. Pegasus. YG, baby!